my first question for you is just how did you, in your own words, how did you start the Gold Bar? When was it established? Gold Bar was established about 15 years ago. We patronized it um, for a number of years. And then seven years ago, we were in a transition. And the former owner was looking, he'd been looking to sell it a few times. And we were just in the right place at the right time. We had a real good relationship with them. And, um, one day, my husband, I called him on my way home from work. And he said, I can't talk, I'm working. And when I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm making coffee. He said, I think we're going to buy Gold Bar. And the next thing you know, we did. Came into it without any business experience or any knowledge about what we were getting into, except that it was a place we were familiar with. We knew it was um, well established, had a good reputation, a good clientele, and uh, it was uh, the type of a business that we felt like uh, we would be compatible with our, with our life. And, uh, seven years ago, that's what we did. We took the leap and, and brought Gold Bar. So previous to that, were you guys? What were you guys doing? My husband was a pastor for 35 years, and along with that being a pastor's wife, I was a commercial artist, and then just before we brought Gold Bar, I had been teaching in preschool in the Irene School District for a couple of years. So you came into it with basically no business experience? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, my second question is, how often do you think about the economy, and how has your business and the way you run things changed as a result of recent changes in the economy? Well, we have to think of the economy every day. Uh, you know, on a down day, um, if, if revenue is down, I can't help but think, oh, no, you know, is, this, is this a trend? The next day it could be way up and you get excited. And, you know, I'm sure that uh, everybody doesn't look at business like that, but because we're here every day and totally hands-on with the business, um, we do pay real close attention to it. Um, with the changes in the last couple of years, one thing that, that I've done more and more, because I primarily run the business, is I'm always comparing vendors and finding the best prices on the best product, because we won't take an inferior product by any means. Um, but there are, there's always a great vendor out there. Some of our vendors have, have actually adjusted their prices to keep our business. And that's been really nice. Um, the other thing that we're able to do because we're a small family owned business is we can, during the slump times in the summer, my husband and I and my son can pick up hours and rather than hire extra people that we can't provide the hours for, we pick up the hours and it helps cut payroll and taxes and stuff like that. Um, that's just an advantage to being a small family. We can always pick up the slack if somebody calls and sick, we don't sit there and say, oh, we've got to pull in another employee. We can pick up the hours there. Yeah. Um, we've done things with our, with our menu and our drinks that I think help bring the business in um, during some of the tougher times. Mondays were always kind of a low day, so we started a couple years ago, Pastry Punch Monday, where we have a punch card anyhow, but on Mondays you get a punch for your pastry. And um, people like that, those extra bonuses. On Wednesdays we do an uber-sized Wednesday where you can pay for a 20-ounce drink and get a 24-ounce drink. So there are little things that we do like that. Because we have the freedom to do it. And on a whim we can, we can you know, just do things that are beneficial to to our guests. And um, it helps them out too. I think it, it helps them know that uh, we're all in it together. We've raised our prices twice in seven years. Uh, we don't do it according to uh, according to what our costs are, because that would be fair to guess. Uh, the first time we raised it was maybe a year or two in the business. We raised our prices a quarter, and about two years ago, two and a half years ago, we raised our prices another quarter. So we're not raising them out of sight. We have to stay competitive with the other coffee shops around. And uh, we still offer a better product because we use higher quality um, products for our drinks. So you know, we're not yet trying to cut our bottom line and make more by, again, by selling inferior. We still want to sell the best and it's better to us to keep, keep those products on hand. So we try to just adjust things to make, make it fun and advantageous to our guests. So um, you were mentioning the punch cards and selling better products. Um, what kinds of specific things like that do you do that gives you an edge over bigger, um, 
bigger businesses like maybe like Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I know Starbucks, when you're doing billions and millions of pounds of coffee, you, know, you can't use the best grade coffee. And it's not that important. People, I think, will buy those kinds of drinks because of the name. It's something they're familiar with. Uh, they know, just like McDonald's, they know it's going to be the same wherever they go in the country. Uh, some people don't have a basis of comparison. They don't know what a higher grade coffee is. Um, ours are premium beans that are Arabica. Um, they're grown at a higher level. We get them from the Land Brothers in Oregon. Um, we get them fresh roasted and shipped in twice a week. So we don't have them sitting on the shelf for a month at a time or a week at a time. Um, we know the process that they go through, so we know we're getting a very top quality. Uh, it's been the house coffee, the main beef for Bobar for 15 years. Bobar used to be across the street, and somebody wanted to buy Bar and uh, the former owner didn't like the, the terms that were offered to the state trying to just crack the steel at home. And it was so well established that he would have been a fool if he had sold it under those conditions, and he didn't. Uh, so people bought the building and eventually locked him out and he had moved and he stayed close, just moved across the street here because he had such a well-established clientele. And um, the other coffee shop took him a year to open because they had to bring the building up to code. Uh, he'd been around you know, for 10 years and some of the city codes had changed. And but their goal was to get a lot of Brothers coffee and the Gold Bar recipes and former Gold Bar baristas. And, I don't know that they got some of, they might have gotten some of the former Gold Bar baristas, but they didn't get the cream of the crop. And they might have had the recipes, but they couldn't get the beans. The lab owners said we're exclusive to Gold Bar in the state of Arizona. And I called them up a couple of years ago, I called the lab brothers, just because I wanted to make sure that I understood that right. And they said, you know, if somebody else in the area, like in the valley, contacted us and wanted our beans, we would check with you first. And see whether you are okay with us. So, um, again, because it's been such a long term relationship, um, we know what we're getting, we know the people we're dealing with, and they stand behind us 100%.